Sister Marsha here? Sister Marsha? Come. You don't have to plan on song, you know, Sister Marsha. You always have some song ready, you know. You don't have to plan nothing. I don't know why I don't do make you start preach. Can we praise the Lord, everybody? Can we praise the Lord, everybody? Can we just lift our hands? Can we just magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Hallelujah. I've had my sad times And I've had some hills to climb I've had my bad times And sometimes a weary mind But when I look about And think these things all out God has been good I won't complain Hello. 
and I love to see them go and I ask the question dear Lord why so much pain but my God knows what's best for me I love you, you've been so good to me. Mighty God, I tell myself I won't complain. God is so very good to me. His spirit came to me and gave me victory. So I just say thank you, Lord. I won't complain I'll just say Thank you Lord I won't complain Oh, my spirit says Thank you, Lord. I won't complain. God, I'll just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't complain. I've walked twice and I haven't seen Brother Carlton, so that is telling me that the choir is not minister. Let us all stand. Brother Carlton, I was looking for you. Praise the Lord, everybody. I mean, if you're happy to be in the house of the Lord tonight, lift your hands and praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to be singing a simple song tonight. Went to this door and just minister with us tonight. Hallelujah. 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 I love the Lord tonight with all of my heart. Hallelujah. Like David, I can say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would not be standing here tonight. Praise God. I'm a living witness. Hallelujah. That God is able to snatch somebody from failure and like a branch from the burning. And I stand tonight just appreciating God that He's my friend. A friend that's sticking closer than any brother. Anybody ever have a friend that's sick it closer than a family member? Hallelujah. That's Jesus to me tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Mm. Jesus is a friend of mine. Oh. He saved, he saved my soul. 
hearing you my mind Listen, when I am weak, he makes me strong. Oh, when I am weak, he makes me strong. Oh, he is my shelter. He is my shelter. In times of storm. Testify with us tonight. He's a friend, a friend of mine. Of mine. He's a friend, a friend of mine. Of mine. Very good friend, a friend of mine. Of mine. He's a friend, a friend of mine. Of mine. Water when I'm thirsty, a friend of mine. Of mine. Bread when I'm hungry. Of mine, of healer mine. when I need healing. Of, of mine, of Jesus mine. is a friend. Of, friend. of mine, he is a friend. Of, friend. of mine, of mine. Jesus is a friend. Of of mine. Let us all stand. Let us lift our hands tonight. I bring to you Jesus tonight. It's no time for the word. It's time for us to eat. So therefore I take this opportunity to present to you minister slash deacon Martin to you and the Holy Ghost in the name of the Lord. Lift your hands and worship the King of Kings. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. On Christ the solid rock, rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is 
พอใจมันใคร On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. One more time on Christ the solid. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All on the ground is sinking sand. All on the ground is sinking sand. My hope. Worship the King, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the conquering lion of the tribe that is called Judah. Uh, God, we exalt you, we magnify your name, we worship you, we honor you, we glorify you. Hallelujah! The King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, the only wise God. Uh, you are worthy tonight of praise. You are worthy tonight of glory. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to turn with me in your Bible to the book of St. John, chapter 10, and verse 10. St. John, chapter 10, and verse 10. Hallelujah. St. John, chapter 10. And verse 10. If you have found it, say amen. amen. Let us read it together after 2 1 2. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Pastor Daly, could you just pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment in time where again we are blessed with the opportunity to have your words being broken to us, your people. I thank you that you have brought us together in this fashion. I thank you for the unsaved that might be in the house right now. You have allowed them to be here. I pray that there will be a word for every unsaved in the house right now. This is the house of deliverance. This is the place where they can come and know that they can have their needs met. This is the place where God is. And so we pray right now that you will send a word and that you will minister to the unsaved and to the saints equally of the Most High God. Your servants stand to declare the word. I pray that you will rest your hand upon him right now. I pray that you will anoint him in a very 
special way that he will declare the words of the living God with authority and with the power that comes through the Holy Ghost. Spirits that would hinder the word tonight, we declare that they leave this place and that the word have free course and that the name of Jesus be glorified. Thank you, great God, for what will be accomplished right now. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. In our lives, we recognize that many persons will spend time to secure the things that they find most valuable to them. If you have a particular thing that you find great, great position or great possession, hallelujah, something that you find of great worth, then you will put out most, put out your best to ensure that you secure that particular thing. So we recognize that even in our houses in Jamaica, people will put up their grills to ensure that they, they, they secure the things that are inside that particular house. And in some businesses, persons put up cameras to ensure that at the end of the day, if somebody should come in to steal, they can see. And they will be able to secure the things that they have in their houses. It means that we will spend a lot of time and a lot of effort in securing the things that we find valuable. But tonight, I want you to understand that some of the times we put the cart, the cart before the horse. Because at the end of the day, we secure the things in this life that is only going to carry us through this life. I've never gone to a, cem a cemetery and seen anybody bury with their possession. I've never seen a person go down with their house or their car. Amen. But when you die, everything that you have in this life, at that point in time, it ceases to exist. So the Bible says, a man that is born of a woman... It's of a few days and it is full of trouble. I believe it's full of trouble because when you think about it, when you invest everything that you have, at the end of the day, somebody else is going to come again when you die. And they are going to reap the benefit of everything that you have reaped in this life. It means that when you are securing your things, ensure that what you are securing is the right thing. I'm not saying it is wrong to put up a grill or a camera. But I'm mean saying that when you're securing things, ensure that you're securing the right thing. The most valuable thing. You know, the Bible says that when he created man, the Bible said he, 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 he created everything. He called things into being. He said, let there be and there was. And that speaks to the creative power of God. All God needs to do is speak and something happens. But there was something special about man. The Bible said when God made man, he... he, he he formed him from the dust of the earth. And then and, and, and he blew in man the breath of life. And man became what? A living soul. There's a part of me that is more valuable than this clothes that I have on. There's a part of me that is more valuable. Hallelujah. The house I live in. Or the car that I drive. And that part of me is my soul. Why? That is valuable to me because it is eternal. And what I do in this short space of life will determine what I do in the next life. Hallelujah. So the Bible says the thief. He has one thing on his agenda. He's not so much interested in what you have on. He's not interested in the clothes that you wear or the shoes that you have on or the car that you drive. He's not interested in the house that you live in. <laughs> but what he's interested in, most of all, is what your soul, your soul, your soul, your soul. So the devil will try anything to ensure that he steals that joy that you have. But I have a word for the devil tonight. <laughs> the world didn't give me this joy. I'm 
I'm not going to allow the world to take it away. Hello, Shandai. So the Bible declares a story in the book of Genesis, chapter 3. The Bible said a serpent was more subtle than all the other beasts or animals or whatever you call them. That was there. And he recognized that there was something special about the man. When God created you, why you are special is not because of who you are really. You are special because when God blew his breath into you, you become a part. God, you have become a part of God. <laughs> the Bible said you are created in the image and the likeness of God. There is something special about you. There's a part of you that is eternal. And that part of you is your soul. Don't follow the devil. It's your soul. Can die. Or can it? There's a part of you that cannot die. It's your soul. So your soul cannot die. When your body dies and it goes into the earth. And your spirit goes back to God. There's a part of you that is going to juggle between where do I go? Did I make it right in this life so I can make it to heaven? <laughs> but I've recognized that as we come closer and closer to the coming of the Lord let me tell you why the Bible described the devil to be subtle because he operates in a way that if you're not careful <laughs> then he will be slowly Taking you out of church without you knowing it. Better yet, the devil is quite comfortable sometimes with us coming to the house of God. But at the end of the day, he doesn't want you to have a relationship with the source. So what he does, he slowly steals what you had. Can I tell you something? When man fell into sin, <laughs> a lot of things happened in that one process. The devil said to the woman, you shall not surely die. And tonight he's saying a lot of that to a lot of us. You shall not surely die. You can just miss that service. You don't need to go. You don't need to go to Bible study again. <laughs> Come on. You're just, it's okay with us going to a Sunday morning service. Prayer meeting tonight. No man, you don't need to go that. Church is going to be scanty. But tonight I'm declaring to that thief. Hakolo Sandai. That I will not allow you to trick me. If I refuse to drink water for a period of time, I'm going to get dehydrated and dead. And if I don't eat food, I'm going to eventually starve to death. If I'm just satisfied with just coming to a Sunday morning service and not a Bible study, I'm going to starve myself to death. Can I tell you there's a lot of walking dead? <laughs> but tonight, like Ezekiel, I'm blowing the trumpet in Zion. Because 2016, there must be a year of change, the minister says it. But with that change, we must understand how the devil operates. And he has one aim, it is to steal. And at the end of the day, he wants to kill. And his ultimate aim is to destroy. But I'm glad I serve a God who came that I might have life and have it more abundantly. So when man sin, they experience death instantly. There was a separation between them and God. Because that is what sin does. It separates you from God. And I recognize that it is possible to 
to drive a car on fumes for a period of time. <laughs> so it is possible that you might be cut off from the source, but eventually it leads to a physical death. So when Adam and Eve sinned, they died instantly in the spirit. And it wasn't long after that they died physically. And that is what sin does. The Bible says the wages of sin is what? Death. That's the devil's aim to kill, to steal, and to destroy. It created covering. It kind of appeased the wrath of God for a period of time. But it wasn't effective enough to do the job. <laughs> so the blood of bullocks and turkle dove, hallelujah, could not remove your sin. So to Matthew, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, Kings, Chronicles, go to the Psalms. They did the, the, the captivity in respect of where you go. Men was in sin. And they feared death. Because somehow the devil had the keys of death and hell. And they feared it. Can you imagine... Even you trying to live a righteous life, when you die, you're still held a little bit captive for a period of time because of sin. And the Bible said that there came a time, because Jesus had already established in Genesis 3.15, that he would have come and he would have created a way because God's aim is for you to live. I love him. God's aim is for you to live. God wants you to live. And the Bible said, Matthew 1 21, that she brought forth a son. And his name shall be called what? Jesus. For he shall what? Save his people from their sins. I heard a story. Of a little boy who constantly went to work with his father. And his father worked in a place where there was, you know, the ships would pass and the bridge would go up. The bridge would go up to ensure that the ships would pass. And every day, the, 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 the son one day went to work with his father. And while he was working, a train would run on that bridge. So at times when the ship is passing, it would open up for it to come through. But when the train is coming, it would close to ensure that the train could pass. And there was a train coming with many people, thousands of people probably on the, on the train. And the little boy went to work with his father one day. And while he was out there working, the little boy went out. On the part where he shouldn't go, or on the bridge, went out on the bridge. And the news came into his father that the train was coming. By this time, his son was so far out on the bridge, probably was trying to call to him, and he wouldn't hear, he was already far out on the bridge. And the father had to make one decision. It's either, hallelujah, he brings down the bridge and kill him son and let the thousand of persons pass on the train. Or he goes and rescues his son and everybody in the train would have died. And he counted the costs. And he said, bring down the bridge. And when I heard that story first, I said, what a wicked father. No normal person would not have allowed. I'm thinking in my head, my daughter. 
knowing she's out there and there are thousands of persons coming. Once sister just said, well, I'm going to save my picnic. <laughs> but when we think about the story carefully, we recognize that is the same story that the Bible talks about. For the Son of Man came. And he was righteous in all his way. We were already in sin. We were already due for the penalty of death. Hallelujah. You were supposed to die. It is what your train that was on the track. And the Father of glory said, let down the bridge. <laughs> For God so loved the world, the Bible said, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When I consider the value the value of my salvation I recognize it's not time for me to allow the devil to steal it. So tonight I'm taking back my joy. Devil, you cannot have my joy. You didn't give it. But one night I came to an altar. My soul was not right. I was born for death. But the father said, let down the bridge. Tonight, I'm not allowing the devil to steal my time. My time is too valuable. <laughs> You know, when, 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 when Jesus was crucified, and this is the problem that a lot of us have, and he rose from the dead, Peter knowing that he denied the Lord three times, and the Bible said he went back practically to his occupation, fishing. And when he met the Lord, and, 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 and Jesus have a way of presenting himself. He said, let it down on the other side. No, he used something that was familiar to Peter. <laughs> and then Peter recognized it was the Lord. And the Bible said he jumped in the water. A shame. Eventually, he had to face the Lord. And the Lord asked him three questions. First question, Jesus said, lovest thou me more than these? Let me tell you something. The devil cannot steal things that you have valuable. Just like in the physical, you will put out your best to ensure that it's secure. Why don't we put out our best to ensure that the salvation that God gives me is secure? The Bible talks about a man who finds a treasure. And the Bible says he will sell everything to ensure that he acquires that one treasure in the field. But a lot of us are like Esau who sold his birthright for a pot of porridge, soup. How many times have you sat at the TV selling out when there's service and you sit there watching TV scandal. Selling out. Akuriyanda basata. 
if this year is going to be a year of change, then it starts with our mindset. We have to change the way we walk, the songwriter says. We have to change the way we talk. We're not selling out. What we have is more valuable than this whole world. Why give it up? And at the end of the day, you spend your life in eternal hell. So Jesus said to him, lovest thou me more than these? And Peter said, Yes, Lord, I love thee. Now, when you look at it in the natural, it seems like him just saying, you love me. But Jesus used the Greek word, agape. And Peter used the word, filio. So when Jesus said, lovest thou me more than these, what Peter responded was, yes, God, me like you. A lot of us just like him. <laughs> I'm trying to get us to understand that the devil's aim is to steal. The devil's aim is to kill and to destroy. So we like service. <laughs> and we like when it's fiery. And nothing's wrong with that. But we don't love the source. We love the gift. But we don't love the giver of the gift. Because if we did, we would not have spoken to our husbands the way we did. Because if we did, we wouldn't treat our wives the way we did. Hey, Koryaba Sandai. We need to understand the devil's aim. The Bible said he was a murderer from the beginning. And he abode not what? In the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own for he is a, mur he's a liar. And not only that, the father of it. Don't believe no word the devil tell you. Tell the devil this year, I'm going to be more, <laughs> I'm going to be more vigilant. Good word. Tell the devil that this year, I'm going to be more consistent. Tell the Lord this year, I'm going to be more faithful. This year, I'm going to ensure that I try to come to church more often. This year, the way I dress will look like a Christian. This year, the way that I talk will be a Christian. Because what will profit a man? If you gain the whole world and you lose your soul, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. This year, I'm going to be a part of the church of Philadelphia. The church that is rocked already. The church that the Bible said they are set in front of an open door. That no man can shut. <laughs> this year I'm not going to be like the church of Laodicea. We are neither cold nor hot. This year I'm not even going to be like Ephesus. Because if I lost my first love I'm going to get it back. Hakodoba Sandai. Brethren, we don't even begin to understand. If, we, if God should open our eyes and we can begin to see the battle that we are a part of, we recognize that every time we miss the battlefield and we sit on our balcony, there's a bad sheep obeying. Waiting for us to commit fornication. He could have sat But if it's the time for the kings to go to war, go to war. 
And no man that wore it entangled himself with the affairs of this life. It's war time. It's battle time. Devil, you're a liar. You're not going to steal my family. You're not going to steal my joy. This Holy Ghost that God give me, you're not getting it. I am not selling out. I am holding on. Comes what me. You're not taking my praise and worship. I'm going to worship God till I sweat. Hey, Kodoba Sunday. You're not taking my gift. You're not taking my peace. God will keep me in perfect peace. If my mind is stayed upon him. You're not taking my love. God said, must owe no man nothing but to love him. I could have a Sunday. You're not taking my prayer life. Because if I pray, I go steer. But if I fast, and if I fast, I go last. A prayerless Christian is a dead Christian. The devil comes to steal. The devil comes to kill. The devil comes to destroy. But I'm glad I serve a God who says, I come. That you might have life. And that you might have it more what? Abundantly. I'm glad that in this time, I don't need to compromise my apostolic authority. Holiness to the Lord is still right. We have to dress right. You can't just like a Christian on Sunday and wear a short skirt on Monday. As apostolic, as brothers, we're supposed to be walking on the road and see a sister and a skirt up here. I just have to pull it down. Come on, come on, come on. As apostolic men, we need to look like men. I see some pictures with people with tight the pants, them tight. My Lord and my God, help us. But let the church be the church. God is coming back for a church that is without spots or wrinkle. God is coming back for a people whose mind is stayed on him. To them, the Bible says, look for him. Shall he appear the second time? We don't need to be like Esau. And let me tell you something. Be like Jacob doesn't mean that if you look at the life of Jacob, you recognize that the man was not perfect. So we're not talking about people walking around here like them, 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 them are angels. We're not talking about that. But when people, when God compared Jacob's heart with Esau's heart, God could have said, Jacob have I loved. And he saw, have I hated. You wonder why Jacob was willing to do anything. Mark you, he was punished for what he did. But the man's heart was at a place where the things of God was the most valuable things. He was willing to secure the things that are most valuable to the point where he tricked his brother because he understood the value of the birthrights. How many of us have sold out our birthrights? Not understanding the value, the value, the value. Esau gave it up. Ha, Korea, Nada, Basata. 
And Jacob held on to it. I wonder if some people want you to start holding on to the things I've got for 2016. I wonder if some people are going to be more faithful to the things of God. I, I, I got saved in 1995. And I can tell you this. As we come closer and closer to the Lord, there are some things that trouble my heart. I, I don't know about the body else. It was quite recently, me and Deacon Bailey, I realized, shared the same sentiment. We were talking at a funeral. And I recognize that we share the same sentiment, the same heart. As we and, I, and I guess other persons do. There are a lot of things that have changed over the years. And, and, and you're going to have changes. But I believe that some things, when they change, they should change for the better. Look around. When I got saved in 1995... A night service was a park service. No, I know God don't deal with numbers. No, don't go, don't get me wrong, you know. And I'm happy that we came out to the house of God. It probably the 300, you know. I'm happy that person still sacrifice and they still come. But I recognize that in many apostolic churches, even in Jamaica, they no longer have night services. I recognize that a lot of us don't spend, we don't come, we don't, we just, we just, and it's not a case. I understand if it's a case where you live far, 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 and your heart is there, you want to come. That's a different, 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 different. And I'm not saying you must come every single Sunday night. But if you have three, if you have all the Sunday nights in the year, you don't come one, oh God. And all the communion, the Bible says, often as you do this, do, I do it in one remembrance of me. We need to understand what the devil is. You know? The devil is a thief. And you can't pretty it up. If you pretty it up too much, then eventually people just take it for granted. The devil is a thief. See, you have a communion service every quarter, four for the year, and you don't come one. That means saying I appreciate the fact what God do for you. That's practically what you're saying. Because as often as you do this, the Bible says you do it what? In remembrance of me. Of the fact that he was willing to let down the bridge for you. And then you have Bible study. God bless the faithful few. But guess what? I don't believe in dwelling so much on negative. I believe that we can make a difference. I like how Jesus put it. When Peter came to him, and Peter said, you, you're not going to die. Jesus never said, Peter, I rebuke you. Jesus identified instantly the spirit that was at work. As children of God, we need to identify the spirit, the spirit. There's a spirit of complacency, a spirit that, 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 that people, just, just, people just want to do their own thing. People don't have no respect for the things of God. People just want to do their own thing. But guess what? We can identify the spirit. We can identify the spirit. When you have a target, you know, when you have, when you have a target, you know what to aim against. So I'm not going to pray necessarily and say, God, make sure sister this and sister that. No, God, I'm praying against the spirit that's at work here. Identify the spirit. Spirit, I see you. I know you. Hallelujah. And Jesus is saying, look here. Let's, let's, let's set it right. One of the prophets said, break up your fallow ground. Put it together properly. Because I, have a, I, I, I like how Jesus is talking. You know. He always have a way of, before Revelation chapter 4 came in, he sent a message to seven churches. He sent a word. He always sent a word. And he encouraged them for the things that they did right. I know thy works. I know that you identify them. We say they are prophets and they are not. And you know the Nicolaitans. And I know this and that. And he, 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 he gives them a word. But he speaks to the spirit that had worked too. He said, look here, you have lost your first love, Ephesus. 
Hallelujah. Can we tonight recognize the spirit that's at work and try to put in our minds that look, your devil, for 2016, I will not allow you to steal these things from me. For 2016, I'm going to make a difference. If I can, I, I'm, going, I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to ask God to, 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 to rekindle this flame, this, this, this thing, this, this, this heart. I want, I want to love God. I want to feel it. I want to, want to be so bubbly. And that, that to the point where things that will affect me, when people talk to me, boy, all me, I still I love you. I want to hold me, love you so much. I want to be at a place that will, if, 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 the, if the trumpet, every trumpet me, I say, I'm ready. I eat that. More and better place where 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 me and my bed and 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 the, the, you're, you're, you're so much in the spirit that no no one come near you. You're ready for fight. More better place where when 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 God come down, man, the anointed it shall like Moses shine from my face. People said no man, that's a Christian. Me walk into a building and and people said no man, there's something different about you. No more compromise. I want to be at the place where God wants me to be. In his presence. The devil already fooled Adam. And through Adam's sin, many died. But guess what? The devil could not fool a person to who I am looking to. And he tried it while he was in the wilderness. And he could not trick him, the second Adam. That's what the Bible says, forgetting those things which are behind. And looking to those things which are before. I press toward the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Looking what? Unto Jesus, the author and the finish of my faith. If I'm looking on Jesus, I can't sink. I'm looking on Jesus, I can't miss the mark. I'm looking at Jesus, I know where to go. I'm looking at Jesus because he's the light of the world. I'm looking at Jesus because he's the bread. I'm looking at Jesus because he's my water. I'm looking at Jesus because he's my source. I look at my Jesus and devil, you can't steal my joy once I'm looking. You can't steal my love while I'm looking. I'm getting it right this year. I'm setting my house in order. God, I believe it's going home time. It's about time we put it together right. And say if you're in the house, the devil wants you to die in your sins. If you die in your sins, trust me, there's no more hope for you. But tonight, tonight, if you really believe the word of God, you really believe that, you, that God can, can make a difference in your life, you can actually come to these altars tonight and God can give you the Holy Ghost. If you're here tonight and you recognize that in 2015 you missed a whole heap of stuff. You know, let me tell you, let me tell you one of the things. And, 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 and I'm not knocking out on anybody, but it hurt my heart when I come to a Sunday night service and the choir don't sing. I'm here alone. And this person is going to sing on behalf of the choir again. No, 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 I'm not hitting out against the choir, no. I hit not against the spirit. Follow me. Because we, need, we have to call a spirit a spirit. We can't, we can't go around the thing. Hello, Shia. But forget it right. Get it right. Get it right. Years ago, now ending, now closing. Years ago, I remember we used to Every Sunday night, the choir would come and they would gather at a particular point over and over and over and they'd pray. A long time, we used to play. We still play. I said, no. We don't do that anymore. People just come in at Mr. Marsha, am I wrong? Should I? We, we, we have to put it back. The, the things, the, there are some things that, you know, you, you know, the Bible says God can restore what the canker room has eaten and, and, and what the cat has God, God can restore it, you know. Because I said before, you're going to have changes, but if you're going to change, because change for the better. You can't come to a night service and there's no musician. What? what? Seriously? Come on, no man, no man. Them things that can't happen, them things that shouldn't happen. 
not in Zion, not in this time where we should be looking for God to come. Look at the things around us. Look at what is happening in the world. Uh, more than ever, we must be bubbly. More than ever, we must get our garments right. Get them. We must be, we must be so pretty and st- not less now nah, miss me. Come on, come on, come on, get it right now. Come on, put it right together this year. And listen, every word I spoke is for me. It's for all of us. Leaders, saints, everybody. Because if we, go, if, if, if we as leaders don't make the difference, then... So we get it right. You get it right. Choir get it right. Musicians get it right. Go get it right now. Can we identify what the devil is? He's a thief, a liar, a murderer. But guess what? We identify who our God is. In big, in wonderful, in glorious, in magnificent, he's worthy of praise. And if I truly believe that, I'm going to do my best to ensure that he gets the praise. Let my life, let my life praise you. God bless you. Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands and give God thanks for the word. Hallelujah. We thank you for the word tonight, Jesus. True word, a word from heaven. Hallelujah. 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 I know that there is unsaved in the house, but you know, I feel tonight is one of the nights where the saints of God should come at the altar. The altar belongs to us. You know, if you feel like recommitting yourself to God, rededicating yourself to God, Jesus, let us come to the altars. You might not got everything right last year, but you want to get it right this year. You're unsaved, you're also invited. Just come believe in God. Come believe in God. Come knowing that you are a sinner and just ask God to forgive you of your sins. You know, but tonight we, we want to invite the saints to come and just commit ourselves to God. You might have to go, but before you go, just come and spend five minutes at this altar. Recommit yourself to God. As a matter of fact, if you if you if you are a family, if your family members are here, you know, family does come together. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Find your husband. Find your wife. Commit yourself to God. Commit your family to God. Commit your children to God. We don't have to sing any song. Let us just commit ourselves to God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Just talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Father, we thank you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ for your manservant. We thank you, God, for the word, Lord Jesus, that you have put in our spirits. Lord Jesus, this year, we purpose in ourselves, Lord, as we gather at this altar tonight as a sign, Lord Jesus, of our faith, as a sign of our dedication to you, that this year, Lord, it's going to be different. Lord, we are not coming up with a New Year's resolution. 
but we understand Jesus that Lord serving you is really the way to go Lord the Bible tells us Jesus Christ oh, that the old duty of man is to fear you and to serve you Lord we did not get everything right last year Lord sometimes we uh, miss our prayer time sometimes Jesus uh, we think on things that were contrary to your word sometimes God we lose our focus Jesus and our hearts were not at the place uh, that it should have been Lord sometimes uh, we lost sight of our first love uh, God sometimes Jesus our desires were for things of this world but tonight God as we come before you as we Hold hands, God. Ah, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that, God, you will rest your unchanging hands upon us. Father, tonight we recognize that we cannot do it by ourselves. Lord, it's not by might or by power tonight, but it's by your spirit. We ask you in the name of Jesus Christ to rest your spirit upon each and every person tonight. Lord, anoint us from the crown of our heads unto the sole of our feet. We pray, God, that you will give us a determination. Ah, God, that this year, Lord, I made up mind, Jesus, that we are going to live the way that you want us to live. Lord, we are going to make a sacrifice that you require of us. Oh, we are going to dedicate ourselves to you, Jesus. Oh, so that when all is said and done, oh, you can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Jesus, we look to you for your altar. And you are finisher of our faith. Lord, of ourselves, it just won't work. But we know that you have begun a work in us, Jesus. And that if you have begun a work, God, then you are able to perform it. Ah, Jesus, you have never failed, Jesus, to complete that which you have started. Finish the work in us, Jesus. Ah, like that Potter, Lord Jesus, we might be on the wheel, but we ask you, Jesus, to mold us and to make us, to fashion us after your will and your likeness. We come to you tonight, Jesus. Oh, God, we ask you to forgive us. Forgive us our unrighteousness tonight. Lord, forgive us our unrighteous thoughts. Lord, we ask you to be a fence around, around our minds. As we go through this 2016, Lord, this is a year of change. A year of change, you know, I walk. A year of change, you know, I talk. A year of change, you know, I live. I'm going to live to please you. I'm going to give off myself to you, Jesus. I'm going to give off my life to you. I'm going to give off my everything to you, Jesus. Lord, in all of this, we are but just men. But we ask you to keep us. We ask you to strengthen us. Ah, let your unchanging love, God, just continue to be over our souls. Just continue to be over our lives. Lord, if we look to the left or look to the right, we ask that you just put us in order. Order our steps in your words. Give us a love. Renew the love that we have. Ah, that we had when we start. When we started this journey. Renew our love for you. We come to you tonight, Jesus. We present before you those without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They are here at this altar with us. Jesus, we ask you to grant repentance tonight. Lord, we ask you to bring to their eyes, God, that your coming is near. And that as men, that as children, that they need to repent, that they need to surrender their lives to you. We look to you tonight, utter and finish off our faith. We give you thanks tonight for your love and for your mercies. Ah, it's because of your mercies why we are not consumed. Continue to extend your mercies towards us. We give you thanks tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lift your hands, somebody. 
Lift your hands, somebody. Lift your hands, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you feel like you still need to talk to God, continue to talk to God. Continue to talk to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we must get it right. Hallelujah. Just live the way he wants you to live.